Oh, the entire time, don't look at the camera. Just like for a yeah, natural conversation, just, yeah. just look at each other. Right, right. Gotcha. What's going on, world? Brand new Open the Box there on your screen. I'm your host, George Kill, and I'm with Von Wynn, an aspiring footwear designer and artist who creates some amazing genius work also uh has an entire prelude collection we'll get into that but uh vaughn we're here in minnesota with you how you doing man yeah good man your artistry is amazing it captured me on on instagram i spent like maybe 30 minutes 45 minutes just scrolling down checking out what you have what got you into creating basketball art and and also footwear i was just always drawing and creating because like I wasn't exactly the most social kid, so I found myself just like watching cartoons and like anime and stuff. And I, and I wanted to, you know, draw the characters I saw on TV. And then I was also really into basketball. And from there, I was like, you know what? Why not draw my favorite players? First off, who is your favorite player? You know, it's gotta be Kobe, right? Kobe, yeah. Hey. How long does it take you to actually create something like this? Yeah, so this piece right here is probably like, I'd say 10 plus hours. What is the tool that you actually use to create these, these art pieces? Surface tablet and just a pen tool and Photoshop. This one, for example, like it was KD right off the championship. And your Instagram is filled with all kinds of players, but also shoes. You're a big sneaker head. If you could create the perfect shoe, what would it have on? Oh man, it's gotta be a low top for sure. Yeah, definitely like something knit, really flexible, breathable. <laughs> uh, basically a Kobe or something like that. <laughs> yeah, 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 you yeah. can't go wrong with a Kobe. Yeah, man. Describe this piece here. Uh, I know it was for a school project, but what were you going for? What was the inspiration behind this piece you did? I wanted to make something that was like a low or mid top type of shoe. And I sort of studied what was out there and trying to try to incorporate it into my design. So like I wanted to put a strap on there because I personally really like straps and I felt like, you know, why not make it laceless, more simple, easy to put on and whatnot. And some of the inspiration behind the design, uh, like for example, I had this, these sort of sharp lines that come across the top. So I was looking at like the shape of a rhino and like the two horns on their head. Like how can I make a sort wow. of bulky shoe on the front with these horns that type kind of emulate a rhino. For this one, I was, I was kind of inspired by like Arrowson Hugh and what he's doing with acronym. And so that's why I went with this sort of olive green and white colorway. I wanted to make the lacing kind of interesting. So I just sort of brought it over the forefoot and then around the side and then sort of across the ankle area here. I'm gonna put you on the spot here. Performance wise, give me the five greatest shoes you've ever seen or played in. No particular order, but I'd say the Jordan 29, I think that was one of the first times where they used like a knit material on like the Jordan flagship models and the traction, that shoe's phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then they sort of corrected uh, what was going on with 28 because I think they kind of over flexed. I might list off quite a few Kobe's here, but uh, <laughs> I think Kobe 9 was like just such a game changer because it like pushed what people typically think of a basketball shoe and mm -hmm. just it was so high and the traction. And then obviously I think the Kobe 4 as well, everyone was used to high top basketball shoes and Kobe really like pushed the limits. He's like, why not be different? Why not use something that sort of allows me to have full access to my natural intended direction of motion. The first crazy light model, I think that was one of the best ones. And just like seeing, oh, like 9.8 ounces D-Rose and it's like, the shoe's like floating in his hand. It's like the lightest ever. Jordan 16, that was like a really interesting shoe because it was the first time I really saw like this shroud or gator type thing. And now it's become more common and it's a top tier performance shoe at the time as well. Definitely. Where do you ultimately want to take this? Where do you ultimately want to take your talent and how do you want to use it? There's two big goals I have. So the first one would definitely be to become a footwear designer making basketball shoes or performance footwear with like some of the top performance brands in the world. Like, but uh, art was where everything began for me. So I would say just having the opportunity to work with different brands and like collaborate and just come up with like really dope clothing, but also kind of be a freelance artist and like travel here and there and just make artwork for whoever wants it. Top three shoe designers. Tinker Hatfield, okay. obviously like he's, he's the goat and he made shoes for the goat. So yeah. Mark Parker, he's probably in there too. Fujiwara, he's like, his style is pretty cool, but also like I grew up studying like Leo Chang designs too. So I'm kind of torn between those yeah, guys, yeah. but I think I'd have to say like Leo Chang, he's like yeah. up there for me too, yeah. Man, I'm surprised you didn't say Eric Avar when you got him all over the- Oh, uh, yeah. He <laughs> slipped out of my head. I don't know, I was all over the place. 
I brought um, some sketches right here. It was for uh, this Instagram page called Laceless Design. They're holding a competition. So they gave us a sole to work with and basically said, just imagine the upper, design whatever you want. And so I, I noticed a lot of people were making low tops, so I figured why not be a little different, make a high top shoe. It started out with just all sorts of different sketches. I was looking at all the different directions I could explore. I was inspired by the human pelvis and sort of the overall structure of it. So I tried to incorporate that into the design. The sole was not kind of reminded me of the human vertebrae. So I wanted to use the pelvis as inspiration because they connect together. I try to emulate uh, the bone that runs along here. So it's larger up here and then gets more narrow. And then these straps are kind of representative of like how the bones are joined together. And now you also had an inspiration of, of what Lee Ning does with Dwayne Wade. I was like, those look like really dope. Like, let me try to kind of put my spin on it. And so I just started sketching out different ideas and I just came across this whole page and whatnot. And then I like put down a sketch on my tablet and then just started working from there. And I wanted to make sort of this tactical type of shoe, but I, I wanted to make the sole really different by like putting different sections and segments. And then uh, it's a really high collar and sort of wraps around and like straps to your ankle too. One thing I noticed uh, when I was looking at your Instagram, you had this this design initiative. Kind of explain that, what, what is that about? Pencil did 21 days of design where they basically issued a new challenge each day. Designers on the daily for 21 days were supposed to design a different shoe and they just gave us a sole and we just had to design the rest of the upper based on whatever challenge they issued. Most of them took between three to five hours each. A lot of the time is actually spent just on paper, just mm -hmm. like figuring out what I want to make. And then once I have like a finalized design, I just go to my tablet and then I can finish up the rest in like okay. two hours. Describe how it went from this sketch to what you're working on right now. Yeah, so after I finished the sketch, so I, I picked a finalized design, which I believe was this one. Okay. And then from there, I just took that and I re-sketched the entire thing in Photoshop. And so this is just a basic layout of the sketch. And then after that, once I get the sketch done, from there, it's just laying down like materials and uh, just color blocking the shoes. So like this design in particular was inspired by a car called an Evo 10. Right here, as I'm going, I just lay down the colors. As I'm turning these on, you get all the colors and then that's finished product. I lay down different materials and different colors. And then that is the finished product. With pencil, basically, uh, they did 21 days of design back in January, I believe. And I, I started that 21 days of design, but I just didn't post any of my work. I was just sketching on paper the whole time, but I've kept it up until now. So for about 220 something days straight so far, I've been drawing a new shoe design every single day. I filled up like several sketchbooks, but wow. it's a challenge every day, but you know, it's like, it's a routine for me now. Like, yeah. I, I have to do it. Wow. So how do you balance this with, with school? University of Minnesota, I'm sure is demanding. How are you balancing everything? Yeah, whatever downtime I get, like on weekends and stuff, I'll just sit down and just make sure, you know, I set aside some time just to get some sketching, some drawing in. First off, uh, before we get into it, I know you said this is not the entire collection, but what all did you bring here? All these shoes I have here are just probably my absolute favorite Kobe's in my collection. And I, you know, since I'm a Kobe guy, I felt I should share these with you. Yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely. So yeah. what, what I want you to do, instead of just showing the collection, mm -hmm. I actually want you, when you show each shoe, yeah. give me your favorite tech spec about each one that you show. As you know, with the Cole Prelude Pack, each shoe represents sort of like a big accomplishment or moment in his career. So like this shoe, for example, probably my favorite from the whole pack, 81 point game, it was just, Amazing thing. My favorite feature of the shoe is probably just the mess right here in this opening. It sort of, it acts as a pull tab at the same time. It makes it easy to kind of slip on. It's like more breathable, comfortable at the back of the shoe. This was probably the first shoe that they sort of sectioned it off and they sort of put carbon fiber in the middle. So when you actually wear this shoe, it's, it was reminiscent of like a Jordan 28 where like you really feel the sectioned off zoom at like the forefoot and the heel and also like the strap too. I think that was a really dope feature. It keeps you really locked in. It has like this inner booty type of system too that I really dig. This was when he lost in the finals in 08 and they're dubbed misery for that reason. I can hear the misery in your <laughs> voice. I just think this whole like waffle looking upper, just like all these lines, it's like, like it makes the shoe look kind of funky and I think that's what makes the shoe dope. These are the MVP threes. They made these for him when he won MVP in 2008. You don't see these too often. Not too many pairs are flowing around. This shoe is just like, 
such a revolutionary shoe when Kobe went like really low for the first time and you know he won finals MVP that year so yeah this this shoe is definitely a really big deal for Kobe and just like the sneaker community. Koi Fiverr right here another finals MVP from this pack probably favorite feature in this shoe I'd say is just uh, this Nike Torch tongue it's a softer a little bit different material more breathable now the six because i mean we're, we're in the thick of his low top craze so what is it about this one that's that's different from the four and the five performance wise that you like the best the zoom in the four foot on the heel it just it feels really good like under your feet it feels kind of more bouncy not as firm as like previous pairs and you're sort of more elevated off the ground and then just for the overall look of the shoe because it was the first time it really brought out like that Black Mamba alter ego and like place yeah. all these scales. Prelude seven right here. You know, he won the gold medals in these. Um, what made these so different was it was the first time they used like a sort of drop in midsole where you could pull it in and out. Uh, mm -hmm. Granted, it was kind of a struggle to pull them in and out, <laughs> but uh, it was really cool just to like be able to have two different shoes in one shoe basically. Yeah. The Kobe eights here, you know, first time they really put knit material on the shoe was like this whole engineered mesh or yeah, mesh material. It was really breathable, flexible. Uh, it felt like you had almost nothing on your feet mm -hmm. and uh, first time they used Lunar Lawn and the Kobe line too so it was like this was probably the most comfortable Kobe shoe like when they came out with it probably mm -hmm. most comfortable overall I'd say. Interesting story so these are the K54 Jordan 29s one of my all-time favorite hoop shoes Europe exclusive but uh, my sister happened to be in France when these dropped and so I was like please like you have to get them. He's like, I don't know if I can get them. And she comes home and there's a Jordan 29 box. I'm like, oh <laughs> nice. my gosh. Nice yeah, surprise. So, yeah, you know how to shout out my sister with this yeah, pair. Yeah. Yeah. Kobe is obviously one of my favorite players, but so is D Rose. Yeah. And so this shoe is like a really special memory because Christmas day, 2011, Kobe debuts this shoe against D Rose, who's one of my favorite players of all time. And they were just dueling it out that Christmas day. This was my very first pair of basketball shoes, Nike KD2. I love these when I first got them, beat them up. I studied these, like I looked at the sole and like read all the words and just the patterns. And it was like the first shoe that I like fell in love with and what really got me into sneakers when I was like 12 years old. 